What's up guys, it's Armin with Armin Osejo Photography once again and I uh, had uh, a few requests to uh, go over some really basic Lightroom adjustments and uh, here we are in Lightroom 3 and I'm just going to go over some really basic things that I do uh, to most of my photos. Uh, I'm the kind of person that doesn't like to do too much editing, especially when it comes to car photography, uh, but we'll just use this uh, photo of uh, Erica Leong here. Uh, that we shot for the uh, Subi Girls calendar and uh, as you can see my default settings uh, have the saturation turned up quite a bit so um, the first thing I'm gonna do is is actually uh, work on that saturation uh, her clothing right here as you can see uh, is really oversaturated and so is her skin so I'm gonna come over here to the right side and I'm gonna come down to uh, this panel right here with the saturation uh, when you click this you'll notice the, the mouse becomes different, it becomes a slider and I can actually click on her face I'm going to turn that orange down quite a bit if you look on the right side you can see the orange and the yellow is coming down and that saturation has gone down, I'll, I'll keep it maybe at negative 40 for the yellow there uh, her shirt's also really oversaturated, it's actually more of a pink than it is a red so I'm going to take the shirt I'm going to turn that down as well that definitely looks a, more, a lot more like it. Just a little bit more there. Uh, the next thing is the, the exposure is a little bright. So if we look at our histogram here, when I put the mouse over this, you'll see there's red areas that pop up, which mean that those are blown out highlights. And if I actually click the mouse, it'll save those. Likewise, what I'm also going to do is I'm going to highlight this one over here, and you can see that the shadows. Uh, become highlighted in blue. And if I click that, those also stay highlighted. So I'll scroll up over here. I'll work on my exposure a little bit. It's a little too bright, so I'm going to take it down just a tiny bit. And you can see the histogram over here moving over. You can also do the same thing by actually just dragging on the histogram left and right. Uh, but you also see that the recovery is the one that actually changes that aspect there. So I don't really want to go into using the recovery just yet. I'm just going to keep the exposure down here. I, I put it back down to zero. And I'm going to bump up the blacks a little bit because there's a it could use a little bit more contrast. So I'm going to move this up. A little more black there. And when I click away on this, you can see it definitely has more punch than it did before. Uh, the photo is also really centered as well. So the first thing I'm going to do on this is I'm going to use the crop overlay here. And as you can see, there's already some rule of thirds action going with the uh, grid lines, and that that's actually really helpful uh, when you're trying to crop stuff. Uh, you can actually change this uh, over here on the tool overlays. That's uh, for always. And you can also change your aspect ratio here as well. So I'm going to crop this a little bit, and I'm just going to give it a little bit better on a, a little less centered. If you see here at the top left, you actually see a preview of uh, what it actually looks like after it gets cropped. So I'm going to drag this down on this end as well. And if you actually drag the sides, it'll actually keep it where it is and just drag the sides, as you can see. So this looks a little better. Um, I'm going to move it over just a tad right here and a little bit up. Uh, let's actually keep it a little bit higher. There we go. So that crop looks good for me. I'm going to hit close. And of course, if I didn't like that, I can always go back and hit reset and it'll undo all that stuff. The next thing is, uh, there's a few little things on the ground, like this little cigarette butt, that really don't need to be there. So I'm going to take uh, this tool right here, which is the spot removal. Uh, there's two modes for this. There's heal and there's clone. Uh, it's just like it is in Photoshop in terms of using either the healing brush or the clone stamp. Uh, heal actually tends to work better here in within Lightroom for, for these kind of things. Uh, this brush is a little too small though, so I'm going to increase the size. You'll see it increase right there. I'm just going to click on it and I'm going to drag to where I want it to heal from and let go. And when I close this, there you go. No more with the wiser. Uh, I'm going to get rid of this little black thing down here as well. 
same thing. And then there's a few bits and pieces on this side as well that I'm going to get rid of, so I might as well get rid of that stuff. Just like that. There you go. Now, um, the, the sky is, is nice and blue, is polarized, but I want to make it a little darker. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use the graduated neutral density filter right here. Uh, there are different effects, so if you click on this, you'll have different effects that you can do. Uh, there's a, there is a default burn darken, but I actually have made my own, which is I use specifically for darkening the sky. And the only difference is, uh, you see the burn here is negative uh, 0.32. Uh, my sky is negative 1.5, and I've also boosted the clarity up here. So what to wait, the, way, the way to use this tool is you just take the cross and drag from the top of the sky and drag down. And you can see the sky darkens just enough. I can always increase this if I want, so as long as this is highlighted, this little tool here, I can actually go over here to the exposure and I can adjust this to however I want, depending on how I want it to be. I can even brighten it if I really wanted to. Um, I'm going to just keep it at about like that. That looks pretty good to me. And I also think it's a little bright over here, so I can go back to the tool, click on it again, and instead of using that same one, I can just make a new one. The great thing about Lightroom is that you can stack these on top of each other. And so that way, this really bright front area matches a little bit better with the sides through the back of the car and stuff like that. And that's really uh, most of the basics. Um, there are other things you can do with the tone curves, for example. Uh, you can either drag it, the curves here to make it brighter for the darks. Or as you can see, when I drag this, it also drags the regions down here. Another thing you can use is the luminescence tool. Uh, this one's pretty cool. Let's say if I want the blues to really stand out more, I can take this blue over here and I'll go drag down and you can see all the blues really get a little bit more punch. Uh, just be careful about this because if you use this a little too much it's going to be just like saturation where it uh, can be a little overdone. I think I'll do this for, for the, the shirt as well to give it a little more of a nice pink punch to it. Uh, there's also the great split toning area here and uh, this comes in handy if you're going to do more you know, advanced techniques. Uh, you choose like a highlight color, for example, this yellow. You can see that changes. And then choose a different shadow color, like the blue. And you can just see how much, that, how much of a difference that makes. Um, and then you can change the balance on how much of that happens. And then, of course, you can just change the hue this way as well. And the saturation. You can mess around with this forever, so I'm, I'm not going to mess with that. I'm just going to go back to where it was. A few of these. There we go. And it goes down the panel here. Uh, sharpening defaults to 25. Uh, that's not bad, but uh, I usually like to bump that up just a tiny bit. Um, I'm going to go up to, t to 50 on this one. Uh, there's also the great noise reduction over here. Uh, not so much needed on this photo, but uh, as you can turn this up, uh, it actually works pretty well for when you've got high uh, ISO photos. The lens corrections is also really helpful. Uh, I shot this, as you can see, with my 85mm lens, and it really doesn't need that much correction, but if I click on it anyway, you'll notice that there's just a little bit less vignetting on the sides here. But you know, sometimes you want some vignetting, and, and that's when you scroll down to effects, you can use the post crop vignetting here. Uh, I usually keep it just on highlight priority, and when I move the slider over, you can see it vignettes on the sides. Again, you don't want to overdo this because sometimes, uh, you know, you don't want it to look like a fish eye like that all too often. Uh, for the purposes of this photo, I'll probably actually leave it at zero. Uh, you should also note that up here in the lens corrections area, uh, you might have a lens profile for your camera and your lens. As you can see, there's quite a bit of Nikkor lens, 
profiles on here. Uh, it doesn't have one for the 24 millimeter 1.4, uh, but all the other lenses that I've used, it actually has a profile. And I and you can also build your own custom ones as well. There's also a, the manual corrections here if you want it as well. And that pretty much is it. Uh, I, I really don't do too much when it comes to car photography, uh, especially if it's something for like a calendar. But, uh, you know, always take a look at the presets. Uh, there's a lot of free presets out there. Uh, you can see I have quite a, a number of presets here over here on the left. Uh, these ones are, are ones that I've built myself. Uh, and, of course, uh, when you highlight them, it actually shows you a preview at the top left um, on what they're going to do. And, of course, you can always customize it once you actually apply the preset. Uh, those are always good to just get you going, but uh, I always recommend, you know, use it as a starting point and then make something of your own out of it, and uh, you should be good. Uh, that's pretty much it for now. Uh, again, this is Armin with Armin Asejo Photography. That's uh, A-R-M-I-N-A-U-S-E-J-O.com. And until next time, uh, enjoy this tutorial. Thanks.